Welcome once again. Right now we're at Romans chapter 10. The doctrine of faith is from the Torah. Brothers, my heart's desire, says Paul, and my prayer to God is for Israel, that they may be saved. For I testify about them that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of God's righteousness, this term here, God's righteousness, what is God's righteousness? God's righteousness is what God says is right or wrong, okay? When you say God's righteousness, you're going by God's righteousness, it means you are going by what he says is right. Your righteousness or Johnny's righteousness, that is what Johnny says. That's his standard of right and wrong. For being ignorant of God's righteousness. In other words, they didn't know what God said is right and wrong and seeking to establish their own righteousness. So they sought to establish their own righteousness by making their own law, apart from the Torah, okay? They made their own rules. This is right, this is wrong, and this is what's going on so much. The earth is just saturated in this today. They didn't subject themselves to the righteousness of God. You see, there's a lot of people today, they're righteousness is what they feel is right. Well, I, I feel this way. Oh, you hurt my feelings. Therefore, it is wrong. Well, that's your righteousness. That's not God's righteousness. When you go by God's righteousness, you go by what God said is right and wrong, not by what you feel is right and wrong. For Christ is the fulfillment of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So this here, this word fulfillment in some translations is end, for Christ is the end of the law or the fulfillment of the law. That word in the original Greek literally means the goal, okay? Christ is, Jesus is the goal of the Torah. In other words, if you obey Torah completely, you will be just like Jesus, okay? Jesus obeyed Torah completely. He was 100% Torah compliant. That makes him a sinless, spotless lamb. So the more you obey Torah, the more you become like Christ. And to be fully 100% observant and obedient to the Torah of God, you have reached the goal, the fulfillment, the end, the goal of the law. That is to be like Jesus. For Moses writes about the righteousness of the law. The one who does them will live by them. And that is found in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 5. But the righteousness which is of faith says this, quote, Don't say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 12. That is to bring Christ down. So Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 12, you got to get this now means who will ascend into heaven. In other words, who will ascend into heaven to get the word of God and bring it down? Now that's talking about Jesus because you see, don't ever forget that Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word of God in human form. He is the word of God personified. So the Torah says, who will ascend up into heaven to bring the word of God down, to bring the Torah down, or to bring Jesus down? Because the word the Torah, and Jesus, synonymous. That's why it says that is to bring Christ down. Don't forget, this is Torah. Paul is basing his doctrine of faith upon Torah. Verse 7, Or who will descend into the abyss? That's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 13. Again, the Torah asks the question, who will descend into the abyss? In other words, to get the actual instructions of God, to get the guidelines, to get the Torah of God, to get the word of God and bring it up. That is to bring Christ up from the dead, figuratively speaking. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. Because you see, Christ Jesus is the word of God. He is the human form of the word of God. So when it says who will descend into the abyss to get it, it's talking about the Word of God, the Torah, the instructions of God. Jesus, Jesus, that's what it is. But what does it say? The Word is near you. This is again, quote, The Word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 14. That is 
the word of faith which we preach. Paul preaches Torah. This is where he bases his whole thing about faith and salvation by faith. It's by Torah. If anybody says, oh, we don't go by Torah no more, okay? We don't go by the law anymore. We just go by grace. Well, if you don't go by the law no more, if you don't go by Deuteronomy anymore, then throw out your faith. Because Deuteronomy teaches the doctrine of righteousness by faith. This is what Paul is saying. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, there are some people that just oversimplify this whole thing. They say, well, as long as I just confess Jesus, you know, Jesus is Lord, Jesus, like, like a robot. Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I'm saved. If you read this in context, you realize that Paul said this, verse 9, as a summary of the entire doctrine of faith, okay? But it's not just confessing Jesus is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. This is just a summary. In fact, this is just a very generic summary of the whole doctrine of faith as we read of in the Torah. It's almost like saying if you want to go to the North Pole, just go north. Well, you know, it's a lot more involved than that, okay? It takes some mode of transportation, okay? So when Paul said here in a very generic summary that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you're, you're saved. It's almost like saying if you want to go to the North Pole, just get a compass, find out where North is, and head in that direction. I'm telling you, it's a whole lot more involved than that, okay? For with the heart one believes resulting in righteousness. How does one believe resulting in righteousness? Because if you believe the Torah, you obey the Torah, and you do what's right, and you are righteous. And with the mouth, confession is made resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. And that is Yeshiahu, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, and is rich to all who call on him. For, quote, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that is Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Calling on the name of the Lord is just more than just saying the name Jesus or saying, oh God. It means you call upon his very character. You call upon his holiness. You call upon everything that he represents. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? How will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. And that is Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7. But they didn't all listen to the glad news. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? That's Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, didn't they hear? Yes, most certainly. Their sound went into all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. And that is found in Psalm 19, verse 4, speaking about the creation of God. But I ask, didn't Israel know? For Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy with that which is no nation. I will make you angry with the nation void of understanding. And that is Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 21. Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who didn't seek me. I was revealed to those who didn't ask for me. That is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 1. But about Israel, he says, All day long I stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. And that again is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 2. So you see here how Paul based his entire doctrine of faith upon the Torah, the Nevi'im, the Ketuvim, the books of Moses, the prophets, and the so-called Old Testament scriptures. And once again, seek God with all your heart. And if you do, if you do, you will find him. And what a glorious experience that would be. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.